Okay, here we go. Welcome back, everybody, to Coffee and Art in the Morning. I'm Dee Dee. This is part two on my Monday morning stream. We have we can uh, stream in three hour segments, or well, two hours and fifty five minutes. Um, you can stream all day, but you only can do it at three hour increments. So we already did a art journal page in part one. So check that out. I'd say part one. I'm not labeling them part one or part two. It's just an art journal. It's an art mixed media art journal page that we did earlier. And now I want to talk about coloring in the Jasmine Beckett Griffith coloring book. So if y'all remember, uh, I think it was last weekend, not this past weekend, but the weekend before, I went to Books A Million and they had this there. And I've seen it online, never seen it in person. It's a $20 color book. Of course, I had a coupon and a, my discount card and all that. Um, but I went ahead and snapped it up and I've already done a flip through and I'll kind of do a flip. I have not decided which page I'm going to color yet. We're going to do that today. And uh, I know the light's going to flash in and out, guys. Just, you know, bear with me. And, uh, yeah. So, anyway, I went back this last weekend. to I always go to the bookstore, at least, just to go look every weekend. Bye, Lisa. Thank you. And um, <laughs> Lisa's so cute talk, talking to Jeannie. Bye, Blacks. We love our Lisa. She had a great picture. If y'all follow her on Facebook, she had a great picture of her and her grandson. Her grown grandson. That was an awesome picture of the both of them. Awesome, awesome picture, Lisa. She's probably already gone, but she had an awesome picture of her and her grandson. If y'all follow Lisa. Anyway, so I went back to the bookstore this weekend. They were all sold out of these. I mean, they had a stack of them. I didn't count them. Maybe five or six last time I was there when I bought this one. They're all gone. They're all gone. So it must be really popular. Now, Jasmine Beckett Griffith, I do follow her on Facebook. Like, not friend her, but like her fan page. You know, her business page. So I see her stuff. But I had no idea that she had a color book out till just recently online. I saw somebody post it or something. And I never expected to see it in the bookstore. Just to be perfectly honest, I never expected to see it in the bookstore. But there it was. They're all sold out. But I'm sure you can get them on Amazon for cheaper than $20. I think somebody mentioned $12 last week, something like that. So what I've done, and a lot of the pictures that she's shown here, her girls are very blue. Now this one's more uh, cream color, but I guess you could color them any color you want. I mean, I'm going to because I'm the boss of my color book, but I do have my, uh, and I won't show you because it's going to flash out the camera, but I do have, if you go on Google Images and put in her name on Images, there's tons of pictures. Now, I'm, I, I'm sure I, if I look real hard, I could probably find every single one of these girls in her actual paintings that she's developed she's made these that into a color book page uh, but i don't want to do that i don't want to copy her colors i just want to color them however i want to color them but i am kind of looking at a little bit of how she did the eyes and some of that stuff but i don't necessarily i'm not going to try to in other words like this girl she's pale with blue green hair i'm not going to necessarily find that page and color her blue green you know exactly like it. i'm gonna color it whatever i want to because, you know, we're the boss of our color book. <laughs> uh, but anyway, if you, okay, gotta go, out, okay, okay, Jerry. So, um, okay, I got some coffee here. Hang on, let me get that wiped up. So I, I'm kind of looking at maybe her eyes and a little bit of that, you know, but I don't necessarily want to copy the colors that she colored her original paintings in. You can do that. As my point is you can do that. If you don't know how you want to color it, don't know where to start or any of that. Okay, hang on guys. I got glue on my table here. I keep sticking my elbow in the glue from the last episode. Uh, so, you know, you can do that. I might want to do a little bit of watercolor. These pages, they're not real thick. But the thing is about them, they don't, um, the, the picture's on the back. So even if it bled through a little bit, I don't really want to lose. Okay, this is annoying. I've got to, hang on guys. I got glue on this table or maybe it's on my elbow. <laughs> my shirt is sticking to the table. Oh my gosh, I can't stand that. Uh, <laughs> so I'm trying to wipe up the glue here. It's right there. All right, let me hit it with the heat gun because now that I've got it wet, let me dry it. Maybe that'll... Rabbit trail. 
I can't stand my shirt sticking to the table. So I wet it, so let me dry it. Okay, there we go. Now if it's still sticking, then that means it's all, I mean, this is my paint shirt, see? But if I get glue on my elbow and it's sticking, it's annoying. All right, where was I? <laughs> okay, so anyway, if you didn't know what you wanted to color it, oh wait, hang on guys, my scroll quit scrolling. I got 30 new messages, hang on. <laughs> At least if I can catch up. Uh, I don't see anything in caps. Oh wait, I did see. You can also see the full images. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, Terry, that's why I was just saying that you can go on Google Images and see them. I've got them right here. Let's go flash out the camera for a second. I'm going to show you. Look, you can see all of them. See, I mean, there's tons, right? So if you want to see any of them online, let's get the color back. You can see them. But again, if you want to color them exactly like how she did them. I don't really care about doing that. I just want to kind of maybe look at a couple of the eyes, you know, something like that. But I'm not really interested in copying the page per se. All right. So we're going to do that in a second. The other thing I want to talk about is I want to, oh, two more things. One is, it's because I'm getting ready to do an, another color book page out of a different color book. I said earlier on the other part, and I don't know if I recorded it or not. I think I did, but I'm, I know that I start a lot of pages and don't finish them. And because I get a lot of color books, I buy a lot, people send them to me and I'm, and I try to work a little bit, at least a little bit in every color book that someone sends me, if not color, it, tear it out and send it back to them. <laughs> but what I, uh, what I'm trying, I'm getting at is I want to show enough of the color book page on here on a live show that you can see how I approach it because I do approach different color books different ways. Some I'll put washes, some I'll just do straight pencil, some I'll add marker, and no two pages are alike. It's going to just depend on, you know, uh, the, the scene or if it's a lot of skin or if it's a lot, whatever. So I approach them differently. So there's no two, I mean, there's no exact set way that I color them. But at the same time, I, I hope that I show enough of a color book page that you see where we're going. I will eventually finish every color book page that I start, and I do post those on my Facebook album. I have a color book album. You don't have to follow me, nor do I have to follow you, to go to my photos, albums, and then pick the public album. They're public, the color book one, and some other ones are, as well. So you can go see all the color book covers pages and all that that I've posted which I need to post a few more I'm a little behind on the covers but uh, <clears throat> I try to post every completed color book page over there and so you can see it completed but I don't want to feel locked in that I have to spend two three or even four weeks of stream shows to finish a color book page here so that's just the way I'm gonna roll <laughs> I'm an enabler camera, yeah. So if you see a color book page that you wanted me to color that I've started, I hope I've at least got you in the direction of, of working on that page. And I will eventually maybe come back and finish more on stream. More likely than not, I'll finish it and post it. So I just want to get that out of the way because I, there's people say, well, what about that color book you started? That you, finished, you didn't finish that one. Well, I can't even keep up with them myself let alone feel locked into a color book schedule. Uh, it won't be fun for me anymore if I'm locked into a color book schedule. I have enough scheduling with my commissions. I can't schedule in a color book. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to clear the air on that because if you see me start a page that you really like and it doesn't get done like within that week or the next, just, you know, it'll either get done on a stream or I will post it in the in the Facebook group album, not group, not, a, I don't have a Facebook group. Don't, don't, don't email me. I don't have a Facebook group. I just have my plain old Facebook. I don't have time to run a group. <laughs> no time to run a group. But I do want to also show this. I showed this before. I swore I was not going to buy this. I bought it probably about a month ago and I talked about it when I got it about a month ago. I, I've done professional calligraphy back in the 80s and through, you know, parts of the 90s and, and I don't do professional calligraphy anymore except for a few uh, oversized uh, 
parchment certificates that you really just can't print out, you know, and, and, and they need hand done calligraphy. So I do a few of those locally, but I don't do professional calligraphy anymore. That being said, I have two shelves of uh, at least two bookshelves full of calligraphy books and and lettering, uh, calligraphy and lettering. And I said, when I saw this, I thought, oh, that's so cool, but I don't need another lettering book. I have so many lettering books. I don't need another lettering book. Yes, I'm the boss of me. That's right, Lindsay. <laughs> Because oh, I always have the boss, you're the boss of your color book. So anyway, <clears throat> uh-oh, I saw my tripod jiggle. I don't want the camera to go flying again. <laughs> so I, but when I looked at it again, I got it on sale at uh, Hobby Lobby because you can use coupons at Hobby Lobby on books. At Michael's, you cannot use coupons on their books. Anyway, so I went ahead and picked it up. I, I resisted long enough. And uh, where's uh, Janet? Janet's still here? Yeah, Janet's still up there. Uh, she'll, she said, oh, you need it. You know, so anyway, I did buy it. The Art of uh, Whimsical Lettering, Joanne Sharp. And the reason I'm showing it again now is because I do want us to do some projects in lettering. Okay? Um, not necessarily calligraphy. I've shown some calligraphy here. Really kind of freehand calligraphy. Nothing uh, that precise. Uh, I didn't like do a hole on parchment or something like that. I've just done some lettering with calligraphy. But I thought that it would be fun to do some lettering play using her book. I know a lot of y'all have the book. So maybe we can like pick out a project or something if everybody wants to work on it together or something like that. You won't, you know, I'll make sure that whatever we do will, you know, it, you won't have to have the book to do it. We'll just pick a project out of the book because I love promoting books. And, uh, you know, before, well, probably maybe two, three years ago on Ustream, we would pick a book every now and then and do a project out of the book. I wish I could put my hand right on. Maybe I can. Let's see. And I try to, like, promote the book and maybe do a project out of that book. Let's see if I can put my hand on the book that I'm thinking of. Because I think the project is in the book. So let me look. Give me a second to peek here. I'm looking, guys. I'd love to show it to you if I can find it. Looking, looking. If not, I'll have to show you later. But there's a couple of the books that I'd like to be able to do a project out of. I don't know if you can hear me. Hang on, guys. I'm looking for that particular book, The Painter. Ah, The Painter Page. Here it is. So I'll show you a couple books that I'd like to be able to do some things out of. And uh, where's the other one? One more. Hang on. I got two of the three I wanted to pull. Two of the three. Looking. I'm still here, guys. Let, give me a second. Where is it? Wait a minute. Where is it? Well, I'll have to find the other one. The other one that I wanted to work out of sometime was Mark Crilly's Realism. So I have Mark Crilly's Realism book, but I can't put my hand on it right this second. I've shown it before, but I can't find it right this second. So I'd like to do something out of this and something out of the Danny Gregory Art Before Breakfast. This one, um, I was going to buy it and Sister Woman gifted it to me. Now I have his other books as well. Now he has a new one out called something like Getting the Monkey Off Your Back. In other words, it talks about like art... Um, when you get stifled in, you know, art uh, block, he has a new book out. I don't have that one, but I have his other ones on illustrated uh, illustrations and his uh, one on the art journals of other people. But anyway, I thought it would be fun to try to do something out of this book, the Mark Crilly book. And then this one I had done something out of a few years ago. So I'll just show it to you. Um, let's see, did I date it? Don't know if I dated when I did it. 
Sometimes I date stuff, sometimes I don't, but I don't think I dated this one. But my mother-in-law, this was the last book my mother-in-law bought me before she passed away at the bookstore. And it's called Painted Pages, and it's Sarah A. Hearn Bellum Mar. And this one, I don't know that it ever came out in hardback. If it did, I never saw it. But this one came out in... looking looking 2011 so it was somewhere around 2011 12 that we did the project and and i we just took a project kind of out of here we didn't copy it exactly but we took a children's golden book and made a um a little kind of her style kind of like what you saw where i did the um mindy lacefield now hers was a class that i took you saw the big pages, the 12 by 12 pages that I did from her class. Other than her one Sunday morning class, that was what it was called. Maybe it was Sunday morning too. And Mastel's Gut Art, I took that twice. And that was back in 8, 9, 2008 or 9, something like that. It was a while back. Uh, actually, I think it was before I started streaming. So I've been streaming almost, well, five and a half years, so... 2009 and 2008 maybe I don't know somewhere back there I took Miss Stell's gut art that was those only two classes I think that I can remember that I've ever paid for online classes and this one I just you know we just did a class like I wouldn't even call it a class we just worked together yeah you Julie was here Julie probably Vicki so a couple of people have been here since like day one <laughs> so anyway painted pages it's an awesome book for kind of a, and I, here's an article. Anytime there's an article in a magazine about an author that I have, I cut it out and keep it in their book. So she does very, uh, kind of, um, it's whimsical, but it's got collage. Here's kind of more of like what she does right here. So you can kind of get an idea. So we just took a children's golden book and, uh, made this little project out of it here and I just called it a uh, sampler um, because it's kind of like the Sarah sampler <laughs> so I'll just kind of flip through what we did here it's messy writing pencil scrubby erasy and it's kind of got a vibe of uh, Mindy Lacefield vibe to it so we did this a few years a few years ago and I don't think all the pages are done, but you can kind of see we what I'm trying to show you is we took a book, we took a book, and um, and here's how kind of the stages of it, and did her uh, kind of style, if you will, to it. So you can see different stages of the book because we would do different time, you know, different uh, stages that we'd work through. Okay, so anyway. I just wanted to show you that because I do like to take somebody's somebody's uh, book and do a project and promote that book. So I do want to do the the Joanne Sharp lettering. Okay. So oh, all right. One more thing that I forgot to show on the last stream is somebody was asking about my gluey glue book and ink book. Now this is just a a book that's got a glare on there. Let me take a sip of coffee. We'll get to coloring in a minute. <laughs> and I've shown it off and on. I did add a few more things to it. And I just kind of, you know, I just add things to it. This book has a few color book cutouts, like some of the girls that I've cut, I've cut out of, like the kimono, uh, Japanese kimono girls that I've colored and cut out, and a few other things. Uh, I think I did something out of uh, the Daphne, Daphne's Diary. Um, there's a couple things in here, but what I like to do is just cut out imagery that I like and, and occasionally out of my color books, but just things out of magazines, things I like, glue them in here, and then I'll do my form of doodling is just with a black pen, a, a Sharpie, a black um, paintbrush, you know, a black um, 
pen brush or something like that and just play a little bit in it just to kind of no purpose there's no purpose to any of these nothing that this is finished it's just i just call this is my version of a glue book now i've done other kind of glue books with uh, composition books and stuff like this so i turned it into Dee Dee's diary although it's not a di it's not a diary by any means it's just I, that was off of the daphne's daphne's diary cover so i just turned it into me Dee Dee's diary <laughs> so anyway what i like about this book is it's got a full excuse me a full-on index and uh every page is numbered you can't see it it's very very tiny but there's like how many pages 800 yeah there's 800 pages in the book so you can see how thick it is now it's you know they're about 25 dollars on amazon and it's the shipping that gets you so you want to do a prime or a you know something where you know you're bundling your shipping but it's uh let's see what size is it it's a seven by 10 and it's like two inches thick yeah two inches thick <clears throat> if y'all have any questions put them in caps thanks everybody for being here if i miss saying hi to you i'm sorry didn't mean to i should have checked chat again but uh hi cable claire anybody else christy anybody else denise elk lady anybody i'm just trying to see if there's anybody i missed having uh this be another part i've already been here over three hours since like 8 30 this morning so just seeing carrie ann who else have i missed hey luscious graphics i've said hi to susan ribbons and mccarroll and mel gross jean jean's probably napping jean streams at four jean you still stream at four um if you want to put your link in there jean jean is music scrap I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to brag a little on our music Jean. Maybe she's asleep and she won't hear me. Music Jean has been streaming for quite a few years too. Probably five, maybe six now. I'm not sure how long she's been streaming. But she used to only do, well, I don't want to, I don't want to categorize or anything like that. But she mostly did scrapbooking and building, constructing um, buildings and boxes and building things out of chipboard. She and Jen Oz, and I told this last week, like they're the origami of building things out of chipboard. Xander, too. Xander just went to a retreat with, um, oh, what's his name? Um, his name's slipping my mind. But she just went to the retreat and built like a tower, a clock tower. I don't know. I, I commented to her on Facebook, and that's Xandra17. She does Ustream, and she uploads to YouTube, Xandra17. Jean is Music Scrap and um or musical she might be musical scrapper on youtube oh she is there yeah uh it will be six years okay so just sit back jean i'm going to talk about you for a minute <laughs> yes jean has her sassy pants on yes now she didn't used to have her sassy pants on so anyway xandra i commented to her on facebook i said you she because so i think she flew she flew to this retreat with uh somebody will tell me the name of the retreat that what's his name what is his name that she went to? <laughs> uh, Gentleman Jim. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jean. She went to Gentleman Jim's retreat. I don't know if it was like just his retreat, but that's the only person that I saw with the whole photograph thing. So anyway, she built all these huge, like a cloth that's huge. And I mean, I, I asked her, I said, you built the world, Sandra. How are you going to get it home? I don't know how she's going to get it home. So anyway, uh, Jen, Oz, Sandra, and Jean are my three people that I know can whip out a, a chipboard anything. And Jean commented on the sound effects like a... <laughs> so... <laughs> anyway so Jean used to only do that building things and scrapbooking she would not let paint touch her pretty white little hands <laughs> now I don't want to get into Jean's medical issues but our Jean is has medical issues that you would be surprised that she could even get out of the house I think she's legally blind and she will travel she'll get on a cruise and go by herself She'll get on a plane and fly across country and go to retreats. Jean is awesome. I'm just going to say, and I know I'm going to embarrass her, but now she's got her sassy pants. 
she will fling that now she won't splatter but she'll fling that paint touch the paint paint journals she does i think i feel that her journals are so honest and so i don't know i just she's and she'll be the first to admit she's not an artist but she will take a thought in her head from a especially from a song and turn it into awesome journal pages that are straight from her heart they're not going you know they're not like mona lisa's i mean you know <laughs> but they're awesome true i think beautiful journal pages that jean does so we call her sassy pants because she has on her sassy pants and touches paint <laughs> but anyway so she it, she's just awesome she's come so so far yeah she has 10% vision because uh, she was born an albino and she is just she's just awesome and she's come so far in the six years that she's been streaming so if y'all don't watch music scrap she still does an occasional scrapbook page but she does more art journaling she jelly plating she's my jelly plating mentor Jean is music scrap Jean. She's my jelly printing me mentor, um, so she's just awesome, and everybody loves Jean. She's just so sweet, and everybody's saying it's true, right, Annabelle? See, Sandy, everybody's saying they're proud of you. So just give a little Jean. We're giving you a little hug, Jean. Now, of course, Eileen will come in here and give her give her throw shade. <laughs> I just, gee, we love Eileen too. I got okay. So anyway, I'll, I'll uh, move along, but I just had to give little Jean a shout out because, yeah. All right. So again, this is just random stuff. Like this is a color book page that I colored out of the uh, Paris, Secret Paris book. And so color and I just added my own hair. So it's just a little bit of everything in here. It's just all kinds of maybe bits of magazine a little bit of drawing and painting you know coloring i shouldn't say painting uh, i'm i really trying to not do any kind of paint or anything i just kind of trying to keep it ink now i might put a sharpie color like i might you know use some orange or something but it will this is very it's it's like it's like a printer paper thin okay it's like printer paper thin sorry guys i froze for a second with a bunch of mail popping in but it's really thin paper. It's really not made for a lot of artwork. It's probably just made more for writing. But I don't care if it seeps through or anything like that. I just want to uh, play in this book. So, you know, again, it's just a little bit of everything. A little, a little sketching. A little bit of, you know, mix mash collaging. You know, so it's really nothing but so you can see how see it'll come through but it doesn't bother me it's just for me to glue some stuff in you know just free be free be free be free <laughs> so you can just see what i've done here it's a little bit of a chart there you know there's a clip art angel hand-drawn feather a stamped hand so it's just a little bit of everything hand-drawn glue stick and then here's one of the kimono girls that I, that's all colored in the color book. And I cut her out and just drew some little dots. And so anyway, it's, this is my version of a glue book. It's kind of a little bit of gluing in and a, a lot of inking, just a lot of play. Wrote some notes in here. So yeah, just a lot of play. And then this is where I left off. So I don't work in it very often, but when I get an urge to glue something, this is where I go. <laughs> okay. All right. So now let's see. Sip of coffee here. We'll get coloring. Um, all right. So again, this is the Jasmine Beckett Griffith book. I have, um, I do have some pictures of hers right there in front of me on, um, well, hopefully this will keep us focused right there. I do have a couple of her uh, pictures, images right there on Google Images. But I'm gonna, I am gonna—I haven't picked a page yet, so we're going to pick a page. Now I'll probably zoom in. And it's uh, Jasmine Beckett Griffith. The book was $20. I got it on, you know, I got a, had a coupon. And, a, you know, I'm members of the bookstore, so I get another 10% off. 
but every page has a little like this one's called the world and there she is with the world she's got all kinds of fantasy girls she's got egyptian girls she's got you know there's a dragon girl i mean they're just everything that one's called paisley so you know she's got mermaids this is alice in snow white so she's got fairy tales and so i'm just gonna you know i haven't decided yet which one i'm gonna call it and it's kind of perched and sat and nothing more so she's got her little wings there and a little bird she's holding a little bird yeah terry i add to it every now and then that uh, glue book once upon a midnight dreary this one she's got a raven you know poe reference <clears throat> So she has like little bits of fairy tales or, or writing, you know, quotes. And she, uh, these are postcard size. So I'm just kind of flip through. I, I do like the, uh, I like the, um, what do you call it girl here? The uh, pirate girl. She's got her little tattoos. And <laughs> she goes cute. Captain Molly Morgan. I like her too. Do the one with the butterfly wing. Okay, wait. I love that kind of book too. Do the one with the butterfly wings. Or one where she's sitting on a blanket or something like that. Okay, well, I don't think I've got to the butterfly wings yet. This one? Butterfly wings. Lily. That's Lily with the butterfly wings. So she's just got all different kinds. This one with a cat. I'm just kind of flipping through to see which one. There's Little Red Riding Hood with a wolf in the back. Kind of like her, too. Got a lot of food. See, again, <laughs> let me just say this. This is probably like one of those pages, especially if I pick something with a lot of little bits to color that won't get done in one sitting. <laughs> I just want to say that. It probably won't get done in one sitting. So if it doesn't get done, I'll post a picture of it when it does. It says Poppy Magic. There she has got, she's got butterfly wings and poppies all around her. That'd be pretty to color red poppies. I don't know if that's the one you're talking about there, um, Galena. So there's another one with the wolf. So they're very... Um, Fantasy Girls, the absent, the something butter, it's abs, absent, the cat, okay, you're so, too, I'm seeing too many names, I'm seeing too many names fly by there, okay, <laughs> Daydreams and Frogs, that one's cute, look, the frog's got wings, <laughs> that one's cute too. Hawaiian Volcano Fairy. There's one called Flora with tons of flowers all around it. Okay, I'm not seeing ab absinthe butterflies. I'm liking the poppy one. I gotta say, I'm liking the poppy one. There's Lily. I'm not seeing that one, uh, Galena. I see Alice. Yeah, I'm not seeing that one. Okay. They all had big eyes. <laughs> Let's see. Picked a wallet. Big eyes. <laughs> oh, girl. Girl. <laughs> Okay, so I don't, I've not seen this girl. I, I see, I'm looking at a lot of different eyes. I don't know this one with the poppies. I'm just going to make it up the way I want her to be. Just saying. <laughs> They'll probably just have her have like flesh color, you know, not blue or pink. You know, she has different faces, have different colors. Now I'm going to have to try to, let me turn the book over and I'm going to have to break the, the spine on the book. Love the frog with wings, yeah. Now, I could, you know, tear these out. Let me, I do need to get a page to put behind here. 
because you know not only even if you're not using something that'll seep through and I'm gonna zoom in and refocus here in a minute guys because I know it's a white page I know it's gonna flash out I know that you know we're gonna soldier on but not only do you not want to color you know the color might go through but you don't want to bear down on this page and dent the one behind it so you always want to put something behind your color book page regardless of what if it's gonna sink through all right so now I'm going to let me readjust my camera here a little closer this way hang on guys um, I gotta back it up hang on I'm trying to get it like centered over this girl because I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So, oh, you got a new boxer rescue dog, McCarroll. His name is Poppy. Oh, yeah, I know poppies have like black in there. I probably need to look at a poppy too. Let me see here. Oh, well, I got to go back here. Let me go on my phone. Let me just look at, because I forget what a poppy flower looks like. Let's see. Let me do a little investigation. Poppy. I know they have black and red. I mean, I know that. But, uh, they just, okay, so they're pretty much inside are black with kind of a, could be a kind of a yellowy green, real you know got like a little design in there so I found one here so we'll just kind of go with that and we, and we get that far you bought our poppy collar matching tag we need pictures Carol Carrie always says if we don't see pictures it doesn't count <laughs> okay all right so let me zoom in and readjust my camera guys uh, we're gonna try here And I'll try to zoom in pretty close and then just kind of try to move it around. Let me move some of this pens and stuff out of my way. I have to have maneuverability. All right, so let's see here. Let's re auto focus. Wait for it. Maybe I need my small guy for a minute. There we go. All right, still going to flash out, but we're going to soldier on. Okay. <laughs> Maybe if I keep that red right there, that'll help. Just that little bit of red right here. Okay. So if you have any questions, put them in caps. Otherwise, I'm just going to go for it. I don't, I'm not, I have not seen this painting. I don't know what this painting looks like. I have a completely different picture right there just to look at the eyes. But I don't know what this, I just really don't want to know what the picture looks like because I don't want to be influenced by it. I want to color it myself the way I want it to be. So, yeah. Okay, so I think, do I want... I think I'll just go ahead and start on the face because everybody wants to see the face done, of course. So we're going to get a couple shades. I'm just going to go with the nice peach colors. Let me get a couple peach. What's this one? That's, I have to get my sharpener over here. And maybe a little bit of... Get my white. I don't know that I'll need much in the... Sienna, but I need a little bit of what color eyes do I want her to have? I guess I'll have her have brown eyes with the red poppy. That'll be pretty. Okay, and a black. Let's not get blue. I'm just going to pick a few colors. I just got my little tray right here. So handy. Let's get brown. Dark brown. I want a golden brown. I'm going to want a a light umber, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre, a little yellow ochre, and probably a brighter yellow too. Okay, so these and black, I'm going to want some black eyeshadow, I mean eye, eyelashes. Probably want a little bit of a, a cream color. Let's go a bigger one here and a black okay 
So I'm going to tell you the colors I'm using. All right, and she is a little tilted. I mean, you know, I can turn her a little, but the, you know, she is tilted in the book. You see what I mean? I can turn her a little. So I'll probably be turning it all different ways. If you all have any questions, put it in caps. I right, so I have black and white. I have, um, what's this one called? Oh, where's my ginger root? Ginger root. I think this is just called dark brown. Yeah, dark brown. Light umber. Cocoa, uh, no, burnt ochre. Burnt ochre. Light peach, peach, yellow ochre, and what's this one? Canary yellow. Okay, there's the colors that we're going to be using. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to use paint on the background. I'll probably use paint on the background, or maybe a neo color, because I'm not, you know, this is there's no varnish or getting re wet or anything like that. So I'll probably work, but I'm going to start on the face. I might put some red. Uh, Neo color twos for the poppies to start. So I probably will do some, but I'm going to start on the face first because everybody always wants to see the face. And, you know, we never get to details because of time constraints. So I'm going to go ahead and start on the face. All right. So I'm going to start just coating it. And where's Galena? Galena, get your color book out, Missy. <laughs> and I, I'm going to try not to have my hand. You know what? Let me go ahead and zoom in one more. Let's just go for it here. Let's go for the zoom. Let's go for the zoom. Come on, camera settings. There we go. All right, let's 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 zoom way in, but I gotta refocus again. Hang on. We gotta refocus because we zoomed. All right, hang on guys. Let's autofocus again. Hopefully they'll be able to see nice and clear. I might need to brighten it just a tad. See? Auto focus. Focus, focus. Hang on, guys. I'm determined. I'm determined. I think it might be too light. I don't know. We'll see. if I move my hand. I'm not sure. All right. If I lighten it too much, the page is too light. But if I darken it, if I don't, and then my hand looks like it's... Uh... <laughs> Hang on, guys. I'm going to get it a little bit better here. Let's try that. Okay. We're going to try this. <laughs> all right. Okay. So here we go. So let me get all my colors back in. It rolled all the way across the room there. All right. So I'm going to just start by putting a nice light coat. I'm going to take my time. If we don't, however far we get is how far we get. Again, I will post pictures, finished pictures. I'll post finish. I'll try to keep my hand back a little, guys, so you can just see the pencil, because I can I can work back here. It's not a problem. I just have to remember to do it. <clears throat> it's very light touch. Uh, I will put. Uh, I will post the finished ones online. Okay. And remember, you're working with a color book. Every pa paper is different. This is the first time I've worked in this one. So I'm kind of getting the feel of the paper, right? Very light touch. I'm telling you, the trick to blending well is a light touch because you can blend, 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 probably 30 coats, 30 layers, if you do it real lightly. Uh, let me show you how lightly I'm doing it with a, a dark pencil. Let me get a piece of scrap paper here non-shiny paper that's shiny <clears throat> oh well i can just show you on the page right here like on the back side. okay so this is how lightly i'm doing it this is I'll sh let me get full pressure just so you can see how dark this pencil is see how dark that pencil is this is how lightly i'm pressing 
Okay, that's how lightly I'm pushing. You just can't tell with the light colors. That's how lightly I'm blend. I'm pressing, pushing on the pencil. Okay. Anyone who uh, is this light peach? Yes, light peach. I just went through all the colors, Terry. Trouble, Terry. I just went through all the colors. You'll have to go watch the recording. <laughs> this is light peach. <laughs> So I'm just very lightly putting that first. And again, I don't necessarily have a formula. I don't have a formula for coloring. Okay? I do not have a formula. I mean, I kind of have a, my own little way of doing things, depending on if it's a face, if it's a flower, if it's the background or whatever. But it's, there's no formula. I don't have like, oh, do step one, step two. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I was going to show, I got to pull back here so you can see. I just want you to, um, I'm going to go right over her lips. I want a, just a full on coat of light peach. Do you hear that, Terry? Light peach. <laughs> okay, you just didn't know what I started with. Okay, I'm just teasing you. All right, so I'm just going to start the light peach and then I might just move a little bit into the eyes. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and do. Again, you, you know, I, I try to ex I try to explain things as I go. I'm used to using color pencil, so I'm real careful. If I put black, I'm real careful to avoid that black. So, for instance, I'm going to put her pupils in with black. But if you're not used to working around black and avoiding it from smearing, I would not recommend starting with black. I'm going to because that's just the way I roll. All right, so let's see here. Let me get her pupils and, and uh, a nice highlight. Now, I can do it one of two ways. I can leave an area of highlight and or, which I'll probably do both, put in, um, put in um, a, a, a white, what do you call it, uh, like a paint pen white, okay, which is probably what I'll do. So she's gonna have, she's got a few, you know, I want a few shades of color. So we'll just do the black pupil part. And I'm just gonna leave a little bit of area where I know I want the highlight, but I'm gonna go in here and put my own with the uh, paint pen. You could do it with acrylic paint. I'm just going to kind of get the pupils in there and then the dark brown around that she's going to have. <clears throat> and I always like to add, I noticed that her girls have kind of cry, uh, like she did, they just got done crying. So their eyes are kind of red, you know, they're kind of teary eyed. I'm not going to make mine teary eyed. <laughs> But, you know, again, you can look at her, her, her girls and do them just like hers if you're not, you know, don't want to do your own. But I'm not going to do teary-eyed girls. I'm going to do, like, shadow, like, with a blue. Okay. All right, so let me go ahead. Where's my paint pen? I'm going to go ahead and put in a nice highlight here. the paint with the pasta pasta paint pen but you know hope y'all can see that okay now I'm going to go in here I want her eyes to be kind of a golden brown so I'm going to start with again I'm going to use my own colors I'm not going to do any, she's got every color of girl eye. I mean, all her girls have, you know, eyes of every color. So if you want her to, want them to have a certain color, and I'm sure this color, this girl, the poppy girl, poppy magic is what it's called. Um, you can see it completed on somewhere online, but I, I did not look it up. I don't know what color any of the stuff is that she did. Okay, then I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put in a nice bright yellow that I'm gonna go over with with uh, hope you can see 
then I'm going to go in there and kind of blend in some with the yellow ochre. Okay, just to give it a little bit more depth. And then I'm going to go back in with the dark brown. And I think I'll go in here with a little bit of the uh, light umber and give it just a little bit more shadow around the pupil. Just a little more depth. I hope you can see. Am I zoomed in enough, guys? Can you see? I hope. And I normally just don't go in and finish the eyes, but I'm that's what I'm doing now. Because everybody likes to see the eyes done. All right, now I'm going to go in there with a the dark brown and just kind of get rid of the line, like the color book line. I just want to kind of blend that out so it's not like just a harsh black line there. Oh, we're going to pull back so you can see. And start to darken the eyes a little bit more. Uh-oh. Okay, hang on guys. I want my camera again. Just a minute. I gotta, I'm gonna have to take this better. Sorry guys. I know it jiggled like cray. <laughs> hang on. All right. <laughs> Bear with me. Bear with me. No, <laughs> Hubster's not here. He's not cooking today. <laughs> All right, is that going to stay or is it going to move again? All right, we're, we're staying. Hopefully we're still focused enough where you can see. All right. Always something, isn't it? Always something. All right, so I'm just going to... Her eyelashes are going to be very... Even though the color book has some black, it's really truly not black black. Let me just see if you can see the difference. Let me kind of go in here with black. I don't know if you can tell what, where I went on here with black and it's kind of a gray black because the, um, now I don't want to, I'm not going to do every lash yet because I don't want to, I don't want to have to fight around that to get the skin done. Okay. But right, right along this eye here, it's already going to be, well, yeah, just be careful if you're using black. <laughs> just be careful. Be careful. Because you're going to have to touch, if you're, especially if you're going to go right up touching it with another color. I'm going to get her pupils nice and black. With just a little bit of brown in the, there. Can y'all see? Thanks. Hey, Packer Dog, how you doing? We'll throw out some uh, love to Packer Dog. If y'all haven't seen, wait a minute, I need to go get it. magazine, the art journal magazine. You see how far I've zoomed in. Um, Packer Dies in the new Somerset, well, Stampington is the publisher. The ones that do Somerset Studio art journaling are Packer Dies in here. I showed that last week, but I just wanted to show it again. All right. So let's just keep on. I'm trying to kind of keep the pencil point, I mean, you know, keep my hand out of the way. Give it a little bit more shadow under the eye there. 
pop that shows up. I'm going to go back to the brown. Where'd my dark brown go? Oh, there. Yeah. Go back to the dark brown. Trying to, I'm, I'm watching chat to see if there's any questions. Just put them in caps. Just take your time on your eyes. Okay, I need a little bit more of the, going back to the uh, burnt ochre, a little bit of a redder brown. Just a little bit on the, something like that now like I said she has her eyes very um, teary eyed in, the, in a lot of them now I'm not saying every one but some look very sad and, and kind of is my camera moving again oh my gosh no um I'm going to add just a little bit of the peach right in the, like the, under the eye, you know, the little, a little bit on the um, eye lid, you know, the uh, bottom lid, right? <laughs> okay. And start doing a little shading. Now you do have to remember, I'll say this when you're coloring faces in a color book, there's black lines. Now, like when I'm doing a, uh, a portrait, I don't have black lines to, I don't want to call it fighting against. But remember when you're looking at her work, if you're trying to color it the same, she doesn't have these black lines in her work. Her, her lips, her nose is not outlined in black and all that. Okay, is my camera moving again? I mean, seriously, people? Hang on. Um, she doesn't have black lines, like her nose is not outlined in black or anything like that. So when you're coloring, and if you're, especially if you're trying to color like her colors, remember that you're not, you can't, unless you're going to white it out, you're, you're going to be having black lines in your work that she doesn't have. Does that make sense? Or that, um. I'm resharpen. Or like when I do my portraits, I don't have black lines. So you're shading around a black line that you may not normally, if you're if you're drawing, well, when I do draw, that I'm not having to fight against a black line. Oh, hang on. Let me resharpen my Prismacolor 20 times. <laughs> hey, Cindy, anybody else popping in? Anybody else that I miss saying hi to? All right. So I just wanted to say that too. See the black line there? She that's you know that's not something that's in her paintings. So just be aware. So I'm just gonna start shading a little bit. What color are you using now? Okay, this is um just peach. Just peach. We're going back the skin right now is just light peach and peach. The eyes, and oh, I did want to go back in here with just a little bit of blendy yellow to kind of smooth out the brown with the yellow. Give her a glow. I want to go back in here. I'm going to go back in here with the white. I'm going to go right back over that because I kind of lost a little bit of the highlight when I put the black on there. And also... I think I'm going to put just a little bit more, just one little bit of white, just a, like a dab right under there to make it even a little brighter. There we go. Okay, back to the peach. 
So I'm going to just start shading around the eyes here. The big eye girls. They are adorable, aren't they? There's so many different kinds, too. She has a gazillion different kinds of, uh, of them. Putting a little bit more shadow under. See, this is why I'm saying that I, you know, I did not bring those eyelashes all the way back out with the black pencil yet. Because this would be hard to get in here like this, right? Without touching the black. And there'll be a little shadow under these flowers here, too. All right, so once I get all the skin color around her eyes, then I can go in with the, the go back with the pencil over the top of the black eyelashes that are already there for you. Okay, now she has tiny little lines for eyebrows. So I'm going to put my own eyebrows in, too. I mean, individual like hair, eyebrow hairs. <laughs> All right, so let's just let me get the inside corner of her eye in there. And then I'm going to shade the inside of her eyes with blue. Okay, right now I'm just kind of getting all the way around the eyes so that I can, uh, now I'm going back to the light peach right there on the eyelid. Keep it very light. Maybe just a tiny bit. I'm just going to go in here. No, I think I'll go with the dark brown because I don't want it red. Whoops, that's black. I want to go in here just a little bit on the eyelid because of that black line. The black line that's there for the color book purposes. I want to kind of blend that out so it's not such a harsh black line. So I'm just going to kind of blend that out a little bit. Just go right over that black line just a little and go back in with the peach just the regular peach and kind of feather that out a little I'm trying to remember to keep my hand back for you all right so now I'm going to let me go ahead and do the black I'll go back in here now with the lashes because I've pretty much got all the skin around the eyes done. Okay, so I'm going back over the already printed black. I don't know if that you can even see how much that pops. I also think I want her eyelashes or the the black to come a little bit more in. I'm going to bring them in just a little, just a little bit more. I don't see any questions or anything. Yeah, y'all uh, give uh, Packer Dye a little encouragement there. All right, so nice black eyelashes. Okay, can y'all see that? <coughs> can you see the difference with the black pencil? And that's true of any color book that has black already done for you. If you go back over it, it makes it more striking, more dramatic, you know, more, um, just more dramatic. Okay. What pen, Posca pen? It's the fine one, I think. Point, uh, 0 0.7 and I've worn the tip down a little bit doing stars a lot so it's probably worn down a little it's a nice sharp point when you buy it okay so now I'm going to go back in with my gray blue let's see which one do I want do I want actual gray or do I want more of a blue I think I'll go in here with the uh, blue slate I'm going to go in here with blue slate, and instead of doing like red, more red eyes, 
not that they're all cryy. Not all her eyes are. I don't. Well, I haven't looked at them all, so I don't know. But I'm going in here with blue slate for my shadow. Right along the edge. Right along the inside, like the white part of the eye. A little bit, just a tiny bit at the top. And right along, almost kind of like outlining what would be the white part of your eye with slate. But very lightly because I want to blend it out with the white. Okay, so just a tiny bit of slate in there, and then go back in there with a nice sharp white, <laughs> and go in there and just kind of blend that out. I don't want a blue line, but I want a little bit of a blue shadow in the white part of her eye. And if you get it too blue, I'll I'll, I'll take my Posca and show you. Just kind of go in here, and you don't have to have a Posca pen. You can use a bra uh, gel pen, a white gel pen, or you can use a white acrylic paint. Okay, I need a little bit more shadow inside the uh, corner. Oh, not black. I didn't want black. I want a dark brown. Just add a little bit more depth to the little eye corner. Go back in with the peach on top of that. This pe it's broke again. I'm trying to have a light touch because the lead broke again. <laughs> Go with the light peach here. Just kind of blend in the corner of her eye. Now what I'm going to do is take my Posca and just put one little highlight right in the corner. Okay. And again, if you got it too... Oh, i got to fix this. If you got the um, too much blue... In the white part of the eye. Hang on, guys. I want to make sure I get my nice crisp irises here. Then just go in there, just barely just like touch and drag. Just a tiny bit of white back in. Because you do want her to have nice bright eyes. Unless she's crying. You can go in there, you can go in there with the the, the pink. And make her kind of watery eyed. I'm just going to go right along the iris just a little bit. I don't know if that popped or you could see it, but hi, Island Girl, Island Girl Joe. Nice to meet you. And we're just coloring in the uh, Jasmine color book here. All right, so I'm going to just leave that for a second. I don't want to smear any more. Let that set for a minute, okay? And keep moving on to the... i got to sharpen this pencil again, my peach. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for being here. Hope you're enjoying this next these couple hours of coloring. All right, so now I'm going to go back in here. Oh, it broke again. I'm going to have to find... I'm going to go into the barrel. I'm going to get out my barrel, Peach, because I know that baby ain't breaking. Okay. Let's see if that one will work. <sighs> Little shavings. All right. Thanks, Val. All right, so let's go ahead and start on a little bit of a nose. Got a little tiny nose. And again, I'm going to go in here with blue and do some shading and stuff because when I, you know, when I'm doing portraits, I'm not, there's no black lines. Oh, I wanted to do her eyebrows. All right, so let's go ahead and just do a little bit. I want, I want a light, light peach right above the eyebrows. So let me keep that really light because I'm going to go in here with some brown hairs. Okay. So let me go in here with brown, dark brown. And her her girls have like those, you know, like we used to pluck our eyebrows in the, you know, back in the day. So that they're like line thin. Okay, so, but I'm going to make them a little thicker. Okay, she has nice thin line just lines, right? But I'm going to go in here and I'm going to 
I'm going to fluff them up just a little. They're still going to be thin, but I'm going to give her a little bit more hair <laughs> on her eyebrows. That's just me. I'm the boss of the color book, right? <laughs> so I'm just going to fluff her up a little bit of light brown, I mean dark brown. Now, one thing about eyebrows, see how they're kind of curved like that? The eyebrows will give the expression. Every, you know, if you'll look at different expressions, the eyebrows are all, um, very, makes the expression. So I don't want to lose the shape of the eyebrow or the way it's, um, you know, kind of, kind of um, furrowed brow. But I'm just giving her a little bit thicker hair in her eyebrow. Okay. I'm just giving her a little bit thicker and I'm just starting out with the brown here. I'm going to throw in a couple of black hairs because she has, I don't know, I think I'm going to have her have brown and black hair. And I want to shadow up just a little bit more in the crease because I, the, the black, I got to say the black lines on the face kind of, you know, I have to fight against it because I don't want any black lines on my face. So now I'm just going to take a, a few little flicks of black hairs in her eyebrow. So there. No, they're not quite Frida brow. Frida brows would be touching, Lindsay. <laughs> oh, you're asking her, asking me to give her Frida brows. No, I'm not going to give her Frida brows. <laughs> Could you please come to your eyebrows? <laughs> Vicky, I love you. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now I want to make sure my brown is real sharp because I'm going to get in here in some other shadows. <laughs> oh my gosh, Vicky, crack me up. <laughs> brow gel. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let me just get her a little bit of nostrils. Let's get her little nostrils colored in a little. Okay, and now I'm, I'm going to have a. Um, I'm going to try to get rid of as much of the black line of the lips, although it's not as hard because lipstick and lip liner and all that. But I'm going to give her extra uh, corner line, extra corner shadow there. And I'm just going to kind of just lightly go over the brown line just to, just to kind of get rid of it a little bit instead of having a black line there you know okay all right so the same thing with a little bit of shadow with the blue now I know that she uses a lot of blue she has even some are blue faces I like to use blue just in my portraits and shadows just normally usually not always depending on if it's a man or you know how much anyway but I'm gonna put a little bit I'm gonna use the blue for a shadow because uh, I want to get rid of the black lines especially but I'm going to put a little bit of, I'm also going to use a little bit of it for a shadow. Like under her lip there. And under the nostrils. Okay. And I'm going to have to do something to make her look like she has some kind of a nose. I mean, so, I mean, like, not just a little nub there. <laughs> So I'm going to put a little bit of, like, nose bridge, you know, a little bit of a nose bridge on her. And again, guys, I'm just being the boss of my color book. I'm coloring it the way I want to color it. You color her the way you want to color her, right? <laughs> All right, so I think that's good. Just a little bit of shade around her, you know, give her a little bit more of a bridge. Not full on, you know, they got, she's got tiny little nose. Let's put it that way. The tiniest nose, <laughs> the hugest eyes. 
All right, now let's go back in with some peach. You know what? Let me go in. I'm going to give it, give her a little bit of pink, rosy. Do I want pink? Do I want peach? A darker peach. I just want a little bit of uh, what do you call it? Uh, rosy cheeks. This is watermelon. No pale. No, this is no, it's vermilion. No, it's too orange. I don't want orange. Let's see. Let's see what color I want for. The poppy red is kind of an orange red. That'll work. And then also, I want her lips to be, um, have a mahogany in them. So let me sharpen those two colors. Again and again and again. Uh-oh, something happened. Okay, hide, hide, hide. I don't want to do updates right now. Hide the updates. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's funny, Lynn. Lynn said, speaking of getting old, when did my rear end trade places with my stomach? An eyeliner tattoo. Oh my gosh, Vicky, don't get an eyeliner tattoo. Oh my gosh. That would first off it would hurt like cray cray, I'm sure. Okay, so what I'm gonna do this it's uh, poppy red, but it kinda has an orange to it. So I just want to put a little bit on her cheeks, very lightly. I mean, can you see how little that I am putting on there? I just want a tiny bit of that on her cheeks that I'm going to end up blending in. I think I might add a little pink to it. It's not really showing up like I'd hurt. Well, let me add a little bit more. Can you kind of see just a little tint, hint of a, of a cheek? Girl. and uh, maybe just a tiny little bit of touch there all right now I'm going to take my mahogany and I want to do the lips I've got to get a sharper it's a tiny little bit all right let me just a mahogany red in here little lips here We got to do our uh, got to do our jasmine color book justice, right? If we got to look, it's breaking again. Oh my gosh! All right, just a little bit. Now I'm gonna barely touch. Well, I'm barely touching anyway. But I mean, you can hardly see me going over the rest of the lips. Just a tiny, tiny bit, just to get a little bit of red in there, so that I can take my pe light peach. And just kind of blend that red in. I'll go back over it again. I'm just trying to get rid of the. I'll go in there also with the white highlight if I need to. I'm just going to blend that in. Okay, now I'm going to go back a little bit more. See, I'm just doing it a little bit at a time, a little couple layers at a time. <sighs> Go back with the peach and kind of streak it in. Very tiny. Now, if you need to, go in there with your white Posca and add just a tiny bit of highlight like that. I don't even know that shows up. If it gets too, you know, if it's too much, just go back in there with your peach and just kind of blend it out a little, okay? All right, let's go back in with the uh, peach again. I'm going to go back over the cheeks where I just added the little bit of a... Uh, very lightly. I'm just going to blend in that poppy red just just so it does you don't see the uh, pencil marks. Again, it depends on what you're doing. Sometimes you want to see the pencil marks if you're working on a man's beard face, you know. 
And I think I'm gonna add longer eyelashes on her too. I might make those, you know, those those real those kind of lashes that she has sometimes are real long. Again, I'm no expert at her. I just see her occasionally. You know, I'm not a I'm not a jasmine aficionado here, guys. Alright, I'm just gonna go a little bit along the edge here, just kind of just shade it a little bit, not much, because I want to blend it out. I want her face very light, very light. I'm just kind of blending in those cheeks, blending in the cheeks just a little. Okay, am I missing anything in chat? I haven't seen any. Oh, okay. It might be because it hasn't moved. Ah, thanks, Vicki. Like your makeup. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I had to. I had my chat not scrolling. Sometimes you got to watch that. It doesn't scroll. So I'm just doing a nice little blend. And I'm probably spending more time on it than because I'm talking about it. If I wasn't talking about her, I probably would, it probably wouldn't take me quite as long. Now I'm just going to kind of go a little bit over that. Back up a little bit over the um, blue. So it's not... real bright but I am talking it out so it's taking me a little longer because I'm talking rather than just coloring very light touch lots of light blending You wouldn't consider lips, probably wouldn't do. I don't know. I missed something there. Will you need it? <sighs> All right. Now I'm going to come up here with the peach again, right along her hairline, but. Galena, are you still here? Don't just go like that and leave it like that. You have to blend it out. Don't, even though it's dark, dark right under the hairline there, you still got to even blend that way, way out so that you can see no lines. See? And you just got to keep building it up if you want it darker. I'm going to go ahead and take just a little bit of the poppy red again and just give it, that's where it's going to be a little bit more shadowed, right under there. But I'm going to go over it with the peach again. She's looking pretty. Okay. I almost did her African American. I almost did. And I said, no, I'll do the next one. I'll do her next one, African American. Because I thought dark brown skin would be real pretty with the poppies. But then I said, well, I'll just go ahead and do dark brown hair. So I want to keep some light right above her eyebrows, just like if I was doing my portrait. You know how I tell you all to like, make sure you keep a little bit of brightness above the eyebrow. So I'm going to keep it a little light right above the eyebrow. But see how lightly I'm pushing? You can barely even tell that I'm putting anything down because it's so gentle pressure. You can kind of cross hatch or, you know, go back and forth to make sure it's nice and smooth. Of course, I'm going to put another layer over it, so. Okay, same for this side. I'm going to leave a little bit of white right above her eyebrow. Let's work in this hairline right here. But it's supposed to be relaxing to do your color booking <laughs> if it's not relaxing. And I know sometimes I get rushed here, but if it's not relaxing, then, you know, you need to just kind of slow down and enjoy it because that's the purpose of it. Well, other than practicing your shading and your coloring and your blending. <laughs> okay, let's do a little bit more right down here. Take a sip of coffee. Mm. 
and then send it to you, Angie. <laughs> Something like that. A little bit more over here. Very, she's very pale, it's very subtle. actually went a little too far down this side. Let me get my uh, Ticonderoga. I don't think I want the, I want it a little bit lighter up the bridge of her nose there. And that's what I used to, uh, and it never erases 100%, although because I have such light layers, I'm able to. But I just like the Ticonderoga uh, black, and it's called black because the eraser's black and it's black, but it's just a plain old, you know, HB pencil. But it, it does have seem to work the best with the Prismacolor to erase like that. I just wanted a little bit less dark right in there. <clears throat> I think you could do, okay. My first face was more like, oh <laughs> Sandy goes, her first face was, oh, my sweet Lord, what made you think you could do that? Now, she's British. Sandy's British, and I just gave her a southern accent. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go back with the poppy red just to give it a little bit more depth right under there, right under her hairline. Just a little, just a little in the hairline. And then go back in and blend it out. And you can get like 20, 30 layers if you do it real gently like this. You know, once you do this, <laughs> that's it. There's no more going back. Your electric eraser will work well too. Oh, that's right, Suzanne. Go with that. Let's give it a little try. Let's go with the, let's go with it. Let's just see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does work good. This, you got now. It wants to. Let me say this. It wants to get away from you when you. I'm trying to barely touch. You know, like just barely, like give it a little whisk. You gotta have a firm grip on it because it wants to go. It wants to leave your hand, right? It wants to go off your hand. Let's go ahead over here where you can see it better. See. Let's go over where I pushed really, really hard. Okay. It, it, it's not going to erase 100%, but it, you know. Okay. <laughs> but it does. It wants to, when you touch the paper, it wants to go, you know, it wants to get away from you. So you got to have a firm grip on it. <laughs> gently. Yes, Suzanne, gently. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let me just, let me set that down for a minute, otherwise I'm not going to get anything else done because I'm going to want to play with the eraser. <laughs> okay, so back with the light peach again. All right, so now I want to, uh, I want to, I do want to blend a little bit around her lip there. I just want a little chubby little cheek. A little chubby cheek. And that probably doesn't show up very much. Let's see. See, I just put a little bit of peach right there in the corner of her mouth. It just made her have a, like a little, little chubby cheek there. Right, so I'm going to blend back out where I erased because I didn't really want to erase all of it. You know, I want to get that blended back in. <laughs> and 
no, I'll be erasing the opera. I'm not going to erase. I just wanted to just to do that one little bit. We got carried away. Thank you, Suzanne. <laughs> All right, let's go back up here a little bit darker right along the hairline there oops sorry guys i keep remem remembering to pull back from the pencil so you can see what i'm doing i'm trying to keep her very light and i'm spending way too much time on the face did i just see my camera move again i want to watch that baby it wants to get away from me All right, so there we go. Now I'm just going to take my light peach and I'm going to just pretty much go over the whole thing to kind of blend it all together. So I'm keeping her very, very pale. I'm keeping her very pale with black or dark, dark brown hair. But I want to get some pop. I want to get more done. We're already an hour and a half in. We have like an hour left. Two, yeah. And I still have to make the big salad before I make it to jeans. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to go over the whole thing and kind of blend it in very lightly just to smooth it all out. I hope it, I hope it even shows up. I don't even know if you can tell. But the only reason you can do all this layering is because it's a light, light touch. You start bearing down and you're, there's no blending after that. Okay, you can't be bearing down on it. You got to have a light, light touch. Okay, all right, I'm going to leave it for now on the face. And we're going to, we might come back with a little bit more shading around the edges and stuff. But for now... I'm liking the face, okay? Now, the only thing I have to say, the only thing I do not like is there's a black line on, that separates her eyelashes. I mean, I don't know if I can get in there with the... I don't like that there's a black line on her white part of her eye. I want to get rid of that black line. So I'm going to see what I can do here. Because, let me just show you. It's not like an eyeliner. You see that black line right there? Oops. See the black line? I don't like that black line there. And, you know, that's it wouldn't be in a painting. That harsh black line would not be in a painting. Because you, but, you know, in line art, it's going to show up. So I'm going to put that white there with the pencil, and then I'm going to try to go back in with the peach. Let me hit that with the heat gun so I can go right to it, because I can't go over it until it's dry. So hang on. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm going to go in there with the peach. I just really want to get rid of that black line as much as I can. I'm not going to get rid of it completely. Peach it up a little here. Yeah, it's still not working. Yeah, I think I am going to wipe that line out. I'm going to. I'm going to wipe the line out and then redraw it in. Redraw in the uh, eyelid. Because I just can't stand that black line inside there. So let me just wipe it out. And then we'll redraw it. <laughs> I'm gonna now. I'm gonna shade it in. I'm gonna still have her have an eyelid, but the eyelid's not gonna have a black line. You know. All right. Let me dry that. I almost just want it like now. I'll take a. I can shade it in. Uh oh. Do I move my camera again? Oh, there we go. Don't be moving on me. All right, so I still want the eyelid there, but I'm going to do it very, you know, it's not going to be a black line. It's going to be a peachy color line. But I'm just going to kind of 
barely touch it in with just a little bit of brown just to have the peach shade in on it because I still want her to have an eye a bottom eye lid but I don't want it in a black line so this will make me happier to kind of shit feather that in better feather it in get rid of the black And then I'll put a little peach on it. Let me sharpen. And I don't know if y'all can even tell how it's very subtle. I just want a little peach under there. Let me go back to light peach now and blend it in. And I can go back with a little bit of white highlight in there, or even just a little bit more blue, and then touch it with the white again. I just didn't like the black line. That's just me. So now I want to get my white back on the edge. And right on the... You've got to be careful. I'm, I'm not going to be able to layer up this white Posca pen 30 times. You know, it, the white paint's going to build up. I mean, I very rarely like to even use white acrylic paint except for just the dot in the eye. So this is pushing it. <laughs> Putting layers of the white Posca pen in the eye is pushing it. But I just... See, I'm talking and I went a little bit too much in the pupil. Let me fix that. So I'm going to keep it nice and crisp. Now we go back with the blue. Let me sharpen that. It's just a little bit more subtler with a blue or, or a peach, but I can feel the white build up from the pen. Let me try to get in there with a pencil because it's going to start building up and I won't be able to do anything with it. <laughs> but I do like that without the black line. There we go. Clean that off. Might do a little bit more touch up after a while, but that's better. I like it without the line. Hope y'all can see. It's still a shadow there, but it's not a black line. But not that it really matters, guys. I mean, I'm just being picky because I do I do portrait eyes, <laughs> and I know that I wouldn't have a black line there, right? So I'm trying to say, well, I got to do it like a portrait, and you don't. Okay. All right, let's move on because we're not going to get any further than the face if I don't move on. The yellow face in the right side is saying, be careful, Dee Dee, the yellow face, the yellow face. I must miss something, the yellow face in the right side. Okay, now I want to get my, um, actually I need to go get some coffee. My coffee's cold. I'm going to get my, uh, I'm going to get out my Neo Colors for the poppies. My Neo Color 2, Neo Color 2 water soluble. Okay, but I do need to quickly go downstairs and get some coffee. Move away from the face, yeah, because I want to. Now I want to move on to the poppies. So I'm just going to leave her there for a second. See, she does a little, she needs a little bit more shadow, but I'll wait till I get the, because her hair is going to be brown, so I can probably, you know, carry that down too. So I'm just going to leave, leave it for now. I'm staring at her. The background face. Oh, the background face? There's a background face? I don't see a background face. What am I missing? 
I don't see a background face. My, your focus, dude. Okay, I totally have missed something. Sorry, guys. I've totally missed something with the background face and the focus. I don't see. Oh, him. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, G. I'm going to focus, dude. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, I, I need some coffee. I'll be right back. Okay, hot coffee, a handful of peanuts, because I'm having a big salad, <laughs> and a baked chicken. Hey, Barb, anybody else popping in? All right, let me find a clean spot on my table. Let me, let me get a clean next or something. Just set my peanuts on. <laughs> I've got a handful of peanuts. All right. So, I'm liking it so far. Yeah, I feel another. You can ask me, Island Girl. <laughs> yes. She's a giant sketchbook. That she, yes, I have a giant, I have lots of sketchbooks, actually. I have the uh, giant Molaskina. But I did, I took the pages apart. So it's actually a loose sketchbook. I have multiple large sketchbooks. <laughs> Caught you, didn't I, Island Girl? <laughs> you going, oops. Um, most of the paper in the sketchbooks, other than, the Molo scheme is kind of slicker. A little, you know, got kind of a little bit of a, more of a coating on it. But for mixed media, I would recommend, if I had to recommend one paper for me, this is what I would recommend, is the Canson. XL Mixed Media Journal, which comes in multiple sizes. It's a blue cover. I don't have one that's not covered because I cover or paint all of them. And I also despiral them. Let me show you one here. Like this used to be one. <laughs> okay, but it had a blue cover on it. It's Canson Mixed Media. XL, but I take the spiral out and I put book rings so the spiral doesn't get in my way, but it's an awesome, I think, mixed media paper. <clears throat> if you're going to get a nice journal with thick pages, 
the dilutions, that's the one you saw me. Well, I don't know if you were here when I was collaging. That's the one I like to collage in. Yeah, exactly, Jean. And it's, I think it's Canson, Jean. The Strat, there's also the Strathmore as well. There's a Strathmore mixed media and a Canson. Either one, either one, I just get the Canson. But, you know, either one is good. Yeah, thanks, guys. But if you want a nice journal, I like, and, you know, it depends on what you're going to do with it. If you're just going to draw and sketch, I don't recommend the Dilutions journal for drawing in. That's just me. It's more for the mixed media, thicker paper. But the Canton mixed media paper is a good weight. It's got tooth and it's good for drawing and mixed media. Yeah, that looks right, Vicki. Yeah, either one. No. It's got a little bit of tooth to it. And you just use coupons. Yeah, for sure, Vicki or Terry. Okay, I finished my peanuts now. Let's get back to work. Okay. So I'm going to get into my Neo Color 2s. Water soluble crayons. They're not cheap, but they last forever. Okay. So I'm going to spin them around so you can see all the colors because it's not fitting under the camera. They need more, they need a couple of new reds in here and another couple of uh, blues. But you can buy them individually. I'm trying to decide. I think I'll pull these two reds out and test them. Because poppies are kind of orangey red, right? And I always use my water brush. I just I have a whole bunch of them, but it's the same brush. This one's a little rough. I've used it a lot. Let's get one that's a little. Here we go. That one. Let me uh see which one has the best. I have a few of them. Because they do, the tips do eventually kind of feather. Like, let me show you the two. Here's one I've had for a long time. <laughs> there's one I've had for a long time, and there's a newer one. So you can kind of see where they end up after you use and use and use and use and use them. But, I mean, that's a lot of use on that. Okay? <laughs> Just saying. All right, let's see. I need some water. Let me get a little bit of water in here. Hang on. Okay. <clears throat> Eileen's in the corner. She's guarding the bar. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, it is a little bit different, isn't it, Terry? So there's a couple ways you can use it. I got my little paper here that goes, I'm using behind, so I'll just show you. And you can see this paper is a little creamier. It's not pure white. Can you see the difference there? The book itself, um, the jasmine book is not pure white. It's a little cream. It's not as cream as some, but it's like off-white, right? Okay. So this one might be a little too pink. I can already tell it's too pink. Let me go ahead and put that one away. Let me pick another. Let's see. All right. So this one is Carmine, and this one is Scarlet. I think I'm going to go with the Scarlet. It's almost a little bit or Poppies are a little bit more on the orange side. I like this one. I like the uh, Pentel brush, the one that's kind of like this kind of shaped barrel. I like this one. You can get that set of cheap three in a pack. I wouldn't even recommend that. I'd spend the same amount that you'd get those that three pack for for the price of this one. I think this, I'm trying to guess, $12 maybe for this. But I always use coupons on everything. I always use coupons. Thanks, Orla. All right, so this is the, I think this is the Carmine Red. And then this one is the poppy red, or no, what is it called? Scarlet. Okay, now I don't even know if you can tell. See, that almost looks too pink for me. 
So I'm just going to kind of, see that's way too pink for a poppy. Okay. And I clean my brush off on a Kleenex in between uses. The Kleenex just kind of pulls the, you know, cleans it better than even a paper towel. Okay. Where did I find? Oh, you're probably not talking to me. Oh, yeah, I got my Hobby Lobby. I think they have them at Michael's, too, but I got a Hobby Lobby. Of course, you can get them online, you know. Okay, so yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the scarlet. See how it's more poppy color. All right, so now I just want to kind of. I don't think that's gonna go through this. But we'll test it here in a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna put the one away. Want this one right? Yeah. All right. Now there's two ways you can use it. Just like I just showed you there. You can. It's ten dollars on Amazon. Okay. Thank you, Island Girl. <laughs> Um, okay, so you can do it this way where you're coloring and then, you know, doing that. It makes, it's like a watercolor, right? But the way I like to use it, especially in small areas, is take it off the brush like that and then color. Now, this may not be dark enough for my taste. I might think, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and go right around the edge because that's going to be black in the center. So I'm just going to go right around the inside edge of each poppy. i got to kind of speed this up. We aren't going to get far. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to just go around the circle of each poppy that's going to be black. And in the very center of the poppies have a... Now, she didn't draw that in here, but they have almost like a little... Um, they have a little, like inside the poppy, it's kind of like this kind of a little flowery, puffy thing inside. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I forget how zoomed in, I, zoomed in I am. And then it's got black around it, and then it's got the red. Okay, now she doesn't have those little lines on the inside. You can draw them in or not, you know, but I'm just saying that's what they look like. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead and, and just to get the pigment a little pigmenty, more pigmenty. <laughs> is I'm just going to go ahead and go around each one and then I'll pull the rest off because this will give it a nice dark those little lighter ones will be fine with just a touch okay let's see if I missed any there's some down here but I'll just touch those okay so now I'll also pull some off and that will give me more you know a darker around the center there can you see that now uh, most of the shading is going to be done with color pencil. Okay? It's going to be done with color pencil. I'm just getting the red on there. Now don't go don't go crazy. I'm not squeezing this. I'm not squeezing the the uh, brush to get more water. Because you don't want this this paper is not thin thin, but it's not watercolor paper either. Not a mean burn. But you can see how it gives you a watercolor look. I'm just keep pulling that off here. It gives you a watercolor look, right? See? Of course, you could do it a lot, you know, thicker too. Yeah, I know, Orla, I try to, but you know, time's running out. Yeah, y'all say go slow and take your time. Uh, I yeah, I have thirty minutes <laughs> to finish this whole page. No, I won't finish it, guys. But I want to show you enough um, areas, you know, to get you started on it. If you were coloring in this book or any book, just to give you more ideas, right? More inspiration, more ideas. Yeah, here's the cover in case, and I don't want to close it completely, but this is the cover. The Jasmine Beckett Griffith Coloring Book. A Fantasy Art Adventure. That's the cover. Galena ordered it. She said she ordered it off of Amazon. She got it the next day. Ordered it in the morning of one day and got it in the... the Afternoon of the next. Okay. 
And again, I'm going to shade all the every single flower I'm going to shade with color pencil. This is just to give it a base to start to work on top of. It gives it a little bit more tooth uh, to it when you go over it with color pencil. And also it gives it um, a base to, to work with. So you don't have to, you know, you kind of got a little bit of a color thing going already. <clears throat> yeah, I did, didn't I? Okay, so these these are little poppy petals done, and I probably shouldn't be doing these little poppy petals first. Not that it really matters. I'll probably have to go over those with paint later. It depends on what I use in the background. Whether I want to, whether I want to do a wash all along the background or paint it solid, but I'm just going to show you where all the little poppy petals are all down here too. They're all down in here. And you don't have to do that with the wash. You could just go in there with the color pencil. I'm just being finicky. <laughs> and you don't have, you can do it in any particular order. I started with the face. I haven't seen, I haven't even done her arms or anything because everybody wants to see the face done. They always want to see the face. So that's why I did that. Even though we're going to run out of time before the whole thing is done, at least you got to see the face, right? So, I could do some of the hair, yeah, I'll try to do some of the hair. And again, guys, if you, if you are a marker person, I mean, we could use the water-soluble, I mean, not water-soluble markers, water-based kids' markers. You could use your Copics, but remember, it's going to go through if you use a Copic or Sharpie or any alcohol-based marker. You, if you don't care about messing up the words on the back, then just put, you know, just make sure that you put, you know, something behind it like this. If you don't care about that, but uh, make sure this is this is not going through. But make sure that if you're using the alcohol base like a Copic or anything like that, you put something behind it and be aware that it will go through. Your other option is to make a copy of the picture you want to work on to do with Copic or alcohol-based markers, you know, and uh, then it won't matter if it goes through. All right, so I'm just going to go around these little bits that are kind of, again, it's kind of redundant to do this with the brush here, these little tiny bits, but, you know, just do, just doing it. Just got, to, I guess that's her thumb right there. Okay. So, yeah, so you can kind of see. <clears throat> yeah, I do want to get a nice little bit of white line right there, right along the iris, but I've got to let that set up because I'm getting too many coats of white paint there that I normally won't have to fight against because I'm usually not having to white out a black line in my work, you know? So, okay, let's see. All right, let me hit this with the heat gun and then shade a flower or two. And then maybe we'll start on our hair, okay? All right, let me dry this real quick. Here you go. I haven't, my, uh, my Crayola Super Tips haven't, I don't really have a problem with them bleeding. You know, I really don't have a problem with them bleeding. They're not blendable. They're not going to blend like an alcohol-based marker. Oh, where's my lid for my... Okay, hang on, I lost the lid for my uh, brush right here. It's around here somewhere. Probably fell on the floor somewhere. All right, let me just clean it off and set it aside. All right. So now I'm going to take a couple shades of red and white. Let me get the, is it Crimson Lake in the poppy? Okay, so I'm going to just take the poppy red, the Crimson Lake, and the white. Now, oh, let me go ahead and do the black. I think I'll go in, well, just to, I want it to show up really dramatic. Okay, so I'm just going to do the centers of the poppies, yellow ochre. They really have a touch of, like green in them 
So I might just put a little bit of yellow ochre, and I'm just talking about these big ones here. Put a little yellow ochre in them, and then maybe just a little bit of an olive or a, some kind of a green over that. <clears throat> it's not going to be, let's go with a little bit darker green. Just a little bit of green on the yellow. And then if you wanted to put those lines, the, you know, the little lines inside of a poppy, then you could put those into, I'm just going to do a couple, well, that's all I'm going to do for the inside. <clears throat> now where's my black? So the poppies, maybe I'll just get to this one right here. I'm not sure if they have, I did have a picture on my phone. What did I do with it? I'm trying to see what kind of, what, they have a little rim around them. I'm not sure what it is, what color that is. You can't even really see it. Um, but I'm going to leave it. Oh, let's see what color would I want it. Let's go with, uh, let's go with the, uh, uh, where is it? The yellow ochre, maybe a little sienna. Let's just go with a little bit of, I, there's just a little rim around that. I'm not sure. I don't really see that in the picture of a poppy, but I think it's just kind of like the shadow around the little yellow center. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of a shadow around it. Again, I could put those lines that make it look uh, like a little little puffy thing in the center there, but I won't worry about that right now. I'm going to get on to the petals. Okay, so then all this is black. And again, on the po real poppy, it's not this it's not this neat. The poppy kind of comes out all different. The black part kind of comes out all different ways. It's not this precise in a black line. I'm just going to kind of color this in real quick. Let's see if we can get one poppy done and then we'll kind of go to the hair. So in other words, you could really just kind of feather this up into the petal a little bit to make it more realistic if you want it. You don't have to. I'm just saying. And that one's behind that. That one's like overlaying it. Something like that. So you kind of see how it kind of comes up into the petal a little bit. Oh, the colors I'm using, black, white, crimson lake and the the um, poppy red. Now I'm going to take the Crimson Lake and I'm going to get here at some of these shadows in here. Again, you normally wouldn't have all these black lines that outline something. So when you're coloring in a color book, you, you know, you have to just work with the black lines. It doesn't really bother me on a flower so much as it does around the eyeball, right? But now I'm just taking that black that I've kind of pulled out and just going to blend that in. Maybe there's a little bit of shadow under this petal. And then, you know, the black lines do help you define where you want a shadow, like right along there under that petal. Hope that's kind of showing up. I'm just putting a light coat of the, of the, uh, oh, hang on, I got the wrong color there. Well, that's okay. We'll go with it. It's I'm, I'm shadowing with the black and I didn't mean to because I was pulling this in. We'll just pull it in a little further. I thought I had the red. That's okay. We're just going to go with that because I, I did want to pull the black out, but I wasn't really wanting to shadow with black, but that's okay. I wanted to shadow with the, uh, the Crimson Lake. So now I'm going to just go back over where I did the black. We'll just go back over it. light. I'm barely, again, barely touching. I'm not bearing down. I bared down a little bit on the solid here, but because uh, I'm not adding anything on top of that. So that's, a, you know, not, I don't have to worry about blending, but any place you want to blend, you want to have a very light, light touch. And just, it's better just to do multiple layers then try to just get it like that, the color you want, like right off the bat. We're asking the color, size of this color book. Do 
Did I miss that? It's probably eight and a half by here's an eight and a half by eleven. Yeah, it's eight and a half by eleven or close enough. Close enough to eight and a half by eleven. Yeah, you can go as long as it's you've I'm going over the black with the red. Now I'm not getting rid of the black. I'm blending it though. It's because it's such a light layer, guys. It's you, light layers. <laughs> so I'm saying, light pressure. And you know how poppies have, you know, they're very, um, very, uh, I won't say translucent, but they sort of are very flimsy like, very flowy like. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> translucent, I guess, is the best word. So I'm just kind of, you know, keeping it light. Now I don't want to get that on her face. I'm going to keep that. And again, guys, this is just how I do it. You know, it's, it's not like there's a color book rule <laughs> or coloring. You know, there are things that work better than others, and I try to tell you what those are you know, that I found works for me, but it's not like that's the only thing that you can do or the even the best way. It's just the way I found works for me. All right, so see I'm keeping the petals on the edges pretty light. There might be a little bit of a shadow in a fold over, like right in there or something, but otherwise I'm trying to keep the edges pretty light. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to go in with the poppy red. Can you see the difference in the colors? I went, I, I accidentally used the black, which is fine, and then uh, the crimson lake for the shadows there. And now I'm going to go in here with the uh, poppy. I mean, uh, what is it called? Yeah, poppy red. Thanks. You're welcome, Marita. Thanks for being here. All right, so now I'm going to start blending. I'm going right back over all that and then also pulling out just a little further, just a little further with the poppy red, but mostly going over the other just to give it a little bit more depth, a little bit more richness. Okay. Barely, barely. Lightly, lightly. I got that a little too black in there because I forgot or I didn't know I was using black. So I got a little too black in there, but that's all right. We'll just go with it. You can blend it out even more. I wanted to try to do a little bit of background for you too, but we'll see. All right, so I'm just kind of going over and just a little beyond. Because remember, it's all got a nice coat of, uh... oh, one other thing that I want to tell you, and I always try to tell you. All right, because, let's use this for an example where we did this. All right, where we've already put down some Neo Color. Now, I'm going to go over this right here with the pencil. Okay, just a lot, just a light coat of. I'm barely touching. I'm just doing that, but I'm going over the, I'm going over the uh, neo color right here. I've no pencil, no pencil there, even though they look very similar, right? Well, the reason, another reason that it works well with a wash, uh, whether that wash is acrylic paint, or whether that wash is your neo color too, is what you can now do with with that wash with white. If I try to take the white and go over, remember, this is color pencil right here, right? Very lightly, not bared down. If I try to go over that with white, it goes over it, but watch where when I go over here where there's no pencil. Look, see how much brighter that is? Well, I don't know if you can see. I kind of got quite a bit of paint. Can you see how much brighter that is than there? It's because, and I do it with black because it shows the best. Um, 
Let me just get a... Do I have any black on this palette left over from earlier? Yeah, I do. Well, actually, I think that's blue, but it'll work. Okay, so I'm going to put this blue... It's blue. I'm going to put that blue down. I'm going to show you, and I, I show this all the time, but just so that you can see. Now, let me dry that, because you can't put pencil over wet anything. <laughs> okay? All right, so let me hit that with the heat gun. That's just acrylic paint. All right, now let me take a blue pencil. And like I said, I usually do it with black, but this will work too. Where's my, oh, where's my indigo blue? Here we go. All right, so now I'm going to get, I'm going to get, um, and even if I do it like lightly and build it up, okay, I just want to show y'all a little white pencil trick here, which I show y'all all the time. Even if I do real light coats and this builds up, I'm doing it lightly and building it up. I mean, I could just sit here and do this, okay, either way, I'm still building up, but I want to show you something. Now, as long as I'm doing this, see, you can still continue to add colors to it, right? But my, what I'm going to show you here is white. So as, as I'm building this up and getting this, is this dark, all right, now I'm going to take my white and go over the color pencil. Look, no matter, I'm bearing down really hard. No matter how hard I bear down, you see what happens? I mean, I had to, like, look how hard I had to bear down to get that. You know, just a regular coat of white. See that happen? what happens when you go over the pencil? Now let me clean my tip off. Now here I'm going to go over the paint, right? Look, one swipe, two swipes, two swipes, and look at the white. See the difference? This is, this is the benefit of having a wash right there one of the benefits of having a wash rather than trying to go over a pen your pencil wash pencil wash pencil see it'll go over the it'll go over paint it'll blend with the pencil okay all right back to our little girl now i the other tip i just put that i just put this through the blue all right let me show you again all right, look Look at all the blue that's on there. If I took this right now and went on her face, blue mark on the face. So when you see my desk here, you see all this? That's where I've cleaned off my pencil. See, that's where I'm cleaning off the pencil as I go. I know, the acrylic tooth and the way that you can do light colors over, over it like that. So now I'm going to take my white. Now I don't, well, the, I started to do all that to show you that now any place, there's still blue on that, any place where there's just a wash and not color pencil, I'm going to get a nice vibrant white. Not that I really want that on a poppy, but I'm just saying you can get a nice vibrant white on top because it's just the, it's not the color pencil there. These areas that right now that I'm touching, there's no color pencil. So I'm able to, or very little, I'm able to get, see how bright that white is right there? Now, I may or may not want it that bright um, for a poppy. And again, you if you don't, you know, if you want to have a realistic poppy, look at a picture, right? So I know it does make a difference, doesn't it, Elk Lady? You know, I can blend here all these colors together with the white I'm just kind of blend them together a little better but I'm not going to get that white right because I'm going over color pencil I'm blending color pencil right here but let me clean off my thing here now I'm coming over here on the edge where there's no color pencil and it, it's very it's much brighter can you see that again you know if, if you want your poppies a little fluffier and not so petalish, <laughs> you probably don't want it to be so, you want it to be a little looser because, and keep that watercolory look. The poppies are probably going to look more like this, you know, watercolory, 
because they're so translucent, but that's, you know, totally up to how much, you know, time and what you want to spend time-wise on them. So I'm just going to kind of blend this in just a little here, and then I'll go back with, the, with my color, with my two reds. And again, because I accidentally put black here, I'm going to try to blend that a little bit more red. It's a little too black, so I'm going to go back over it. But because I do light pressure, guys, is the reason I can get so many layers. I can't stress that enough. Light pressure, lots of layers. So I'm going back over the black again. Do you like blender? I don't use a blender. I have some, but I don't use them. I have a couple laying around here somewhere. I just like blending with um, pencil. And not that there's anything wrong with it. If you feel comfortable and work well with the blender pencil, go for it. And some people like the gamma saw blending. Get, I don't like to get my pages wet. I don't like to get my paper wet, whether it's a, a portrait or a color book. I, that's just me. Again, I just I just what I like. Now I'm taking the orangey poppy red and doing another layer. We'll do a little bit of our hair because then we're going to run out of time on this three hour segment. Don't forget, Jean streams at four. If you all want to watch Jean, I don't know if she's going to do jelly playing, gen, uh, uh, scrapbooking, or if she's going to do uh, what do you call it? Uh, art journal. I hear my mailman out there. He's lingering. I don't know if that means I have happy mail. Let me take a peek out. He's trying to look in the truck. Do I have anything else? Do I have anything else? He's looking, looking. He's not getting out of the truck yet. Looking. He put some stuff in the mailbox, but a box he has to come up to the door. He's still looking, looking. Looking, and he's driving away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So anyway, all right. So now let me go back in here with one last little bit of white blending. And again, I'm not trying to get the, I don't want the flower too pink. I'm trying to keep it on the orange side. You know, I could actually, you know, put some yellow in here too. I'm just going to blend out that little bit. I don't worry so much about wax bloom on the color books. And wax bloom isn't so bad. It's, I'll tell you what's bad about, by the time you see wax bloom, you've probably blended as many layers as you can blend. So if you see wax bloom, it's not a bad, it's not like, oh my gosh, no wax bloom. But by the time you see wax bloom, you've probably layered it up as far as it's going. You know what I mean, Vern? And, you know, it's just, you know, you can, you can kind of smooth some of it off with a, a baby, I mean, not a baby wipe, a um, Q-tip or a tissue. You know, you can take a tissue and you can at least make the wax bloom even. Okay, you can just kind of blend it out a little bit. And the wax bloom will be, the wax bloom will be even. All right, it's still there, but it's not as, it's not as, you won't see all the pencil marks. Does that make sense? Again, it's the wax bloom itself is, is the problem with it is you, by the time you're seeing wax bloom, which is like the waxy, shiny bit, by the time you see it, you've probably layered as many layers as you can. 
again, this got a little dark right here because I accidentally picked up black. And I could take my eraser and try to erase some of it out. But, you know, there we go. So there's our poppy. Again, I think I want a little bit more of a gray green or an olive green inside. It's not quite dark. Uh, inside the little center. I think it has a little bit of a green tinge to it. Something just goes something like that. You know, and I, it seems like it has a little dot in the center with lines coming out of it. But, you know, I'm just uh, like a little star thing in the middle, something like that. So that's why I use reference. Now, I don't know what every flower looks like, and nobody else does either. That's why you use reference. All right, so now I'm going to take my um, dark brown and just trying to go right along the black line just to kind of get, again, blend it out just a little. There we go. So that's as far as I'm going to take that poppy. Now, all the poppies will be done the same way, you know. The smaller ones won't have as much black coming out. But I looked at the poppies on, and they all kind of have, a, you know, the black kind of just molts out. It's not like any kind of def definitive shape. It just kind of just kind of grows out different ways. So that's kind of where I went. Oh, I still don't know where the cap to my, pen, my brush went. It's here somewhere. All right. So now let's go on to her hair. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to want her to have dark brown hair, but I'm going to want her to have some light areas, too. How many Neos is your set? It's 80, what is it, 84? Let's put it back in. 84. Okay, so we can use the Neos on the hair as a base. Let's get a nice, just a nice... I don't want to say chocolate brown, but kind of like, uh, I don't know what this one is. What is it? Oh, I can't see it. Where's my, where's my jean? Sanguine? Maybe it's a red. I don't want red. Well, it's kind of a chocolatey brown. Maybe I need to go with more of a chocolatey brown. But I do want some light areas. Okay. So again, remember, I'll go with this one. If you have a base of paint, you can get some nice, pretty highlights back. All right. If I get a brown here, if I just color her whole hair, now again, you could do this with marker, you know, Copics and stuff and blend it out really pretty. I just, I'm just not a Copic gal. I'm not, you know, just, you can go find tons of, of videos on that. All right, so, again, let's just say I even did a light coat of brown on her hair, right? All right, and a light coat of brown Neo Colors. Now, obviously, you can't get that blend like that with just, with just a, like that. You're going to have to blend with other colors or keep giving yourself pressure to get it to look like that, okay? That's a little on the red side. Do I want that red of a brown? Let me see. Yeah, it wouldn't be bad. She can have a little bit of red in her hair. Oh, I don't want too much red because of the red poppies. Hang on, guys. I'm going to discuss my, with myself what color brown I want. <laughs> Do I want... That's too gray, I think. That's too... It's almost on the black side. I don't want that one yet. Maybe I did have the right idea with that first one. Hang on, guys. That's not going to be dark enough for what I want to do. Hang on. i got to pick a brown. I'm not done picking the brown. <laughs> ah, here we go. That's more what I want. A brown brown. Okay. Now, my point was, <laughs> is... With this, I can get nice white highlights or a light color highlight with a light pencil. But again, let me dry this. You know, I'm just not liking that brown. It's not chocolatey enough. 
I'm going to go, you know what, I'm going to go with paint. So what, I'm, what I was going to say is because you can take your white and go over the paint, right, and get it white like you can with the, over the blue, but you can't do that over the pencil. It just wants to blend. See how it wants to blend and not go on top of? So that's the benefit of paint. All right, so I'm not liking any of those browns for her. Just saying for her. So I'm going to get a nice chocolate brown. Let's go with bittersweet chocolate. I want a nice, I'm going to wash it down. I'm going to water it down, but I want a color. I want this darker chocolate brown that I don't seem to have in my Neo set of 84 colors. But then I don't have a, a certain blues or a certain um, reds that I like either. And there's my brush. Uh, let me say this too. I only use my water brushes on, and I'm trying to clean it off here. I only use my water brushes with my Neo colors, my ink tints, or watercolor, like kids' watercolor set. I never use these with acrylic paint. I'm not saying you can't. I never, ever use my water brushes with acrylic paint. Bye, Ippy. Thanks again for the collagey stuff. Okay, so let me get a, let me get my, uh, put a little brown there and I'm just gonna water it down with a little spritz of water. Let me get a brush. I'm gonna probably need, eh, not too small. Let me, let's get a nice little pointy brush here and kind of water that down. We'll do a little test here. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. So now I'm just going to go in here. Let's make, let me just add a little bit more water. Where'd my water go? Water it down just a little more. Because I'm going to start with just a brown wash. Okay? Just an all over brown wash. Chocolate brown. Okay? And again, I'm only going to try to put like one coat of the brown on there. I don't want to get it too saturated because it'll start peeling the paper. And that just means the paper is going to start tearing up on you. Never mind. Well, this isn't going to probably go through. If, if it does, it won't go through much because it's really not. I'm keeping the water pretty, uh, you know, I'm not overly saturating it. But if you, if you take... A paper that's especially this almost just basically not even cardstock thick and you start doing this uh, I, I this is cardstock here this is heavier but if you start doing this over and 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 over the paper is gonna start let me add the paper is gonna start I'm gonna show you what pilling is in case you don't know what pilling p-i-l-l -L, <laughs> or p-i yeah I guess it has two L's it's not piling Okay, so see how the paper is coming, see it coming up off? I don't know if you can see, can you see it? There. See how it's peeling? It's, in other words, it's just breaking down. So this is what eventually happens when you get your paper too wet. It peels. So you don't want to get, don't go too, you know, try to, let me clean that peeling off my brush. You just want to try to keep it, um, you know, just go over it once or, you know, don't just dig in. Don't dig in. <laughs> what are you coloring, Carrie? Here he said you can't decide on a color. I think I'm going to want her wings to be like blue-green, like peacock green, a pretty blue-green. I just want to kind of get a watercolory wash on here because then you go back in with your pencils and start shading and highlighting, okay?
oh, and, and just doing that one little hair reminded me. If you're going to do like this watercolor wash kind of thing on the hair, and you've got, let's just say you had some flowy hair, and it was flying out, and you got all these little strands flowing out. She just has the one little hair there. But let's say you had lots of flowy hair, like, you know, coming out flowy like that. You don't have to go in there with with the wash, the, the paint, on every one of those little flowy hairs. You can do that with the color pencil, because you're not going to be able to tell. You know what I mean, Burn? So, I just have the one there, but just a FYI. And if you want to make a darker, if you want to put another coat on, you just can't resist putting more uh, watercolor or acrylic paint wash then dry this first. Make sure you you know dry it with a heat gun, or let it dry, and then put another coat. Don't oversaturate it with. Let's see where's her hair go. Don't oversaturate it in one fell swoop. It's better to dry it and then go back and add another some more. I'll do a little bit of that here in a minute. Right. Oh, let me just get back in the camera here. I didn't see what color book Carrie's working in. I missed it, Carrie. I missed what color book you're working in. It scrolled off. Dag nabbit. I gotta kind of see where her hair is going. Oh, it goes right there. So we're trying to do her hair before we go. Okay, again, I'm not sure if that's, is her hair turning into the branch of the flower? I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Looks like it. I'm going to make it that way because I'm the boss of my color book. Go with it just flowing behind. I think that's just a flower in her hair. And she's got all this flowy stuff going just kind of floats, it's just kind of floating out there a little bit. Tropical World, a crab. Oh, the crab. I don't have Tropical World. I've seen it. But I know what you're talking about, the crab. a crab. There's quite a few crabs in that one, isn't there? Don't get crabby, Carrie. Don't get crabby. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Okay, let's see. That's part of her hair there, too. Just trying to kind of follow where her hair goes. And it kind of comes up here. I think I want her, and I know a lot of people do the stockings black and white, but I think black and white striped stockings look awesome, you know? So I'll probably do that on her. <laughs> okay, let's see. Is that some of her hair coming around her arm right there? I don't know what that is. Is that part of her hair? No. This is, though, rolling around. I'm not sure if that's her hair can't figure out if it's not her hair. What is it? A sleeve? No, she doesn't have sleeves. What is that part right there? Hmm. I'm not sure what that is. Flower petal, maybe? Maybe it's a flower petal underneath of her hair. I think that's what we're going to go with. <laughs> that's what we're going to go with. Where's my poppy ran? I'm just going to put a little down there. That's what we're going with, whether it is or not. Now, where's my brush again? I want the brush. <laughs> okay, let's see. All right, so now I'm going to dry it. Then I'll put a little bit more 
paint and then we'll go in with pencil. But it's better to have layers of wet. Then have your paper start, you know, being pulled up. A potato. Now I made it into a, a flower petal. I'm not sure if that's what it is, but that's what I made it into. All right, so now I'm going to go back over to my brown again. It's right here in my palette thing here. And I'm just going to add, whoops, let me get a little less water. A little less water. Let me come in here and just maybe do a little bit more of some of the darks. Just a little bit more. I'm going to keep a Kleenex here if I get it too. Browny. So I'm just going to go in here and just add a little bit more. Again, remember that we're not on watercolor paper here. This is not even cardstock. <laughs> we got to keep it. You got to keep it pretty dry. And you don't even have to do this with the with the brush. I'm just showing you how you can add a little bit more with the paint. Just depends on what you like to use. If you like to paint, get in there and paint. Just don't oversaturate your paper. It's better to dry it and then add another layer because you're wearing down that paint, I mean that paper, pretty quick. She's looking lovely. Okay. Wearing down that paper pretty quick. Just adding a few extra darks in there. Especially right along where, you know, and I got a little on her sock there. I go a little out of lines. I'm, I gotta say, to be honest with you guys, when I go out of lines, I don't really worry about it because I figure, you know, when I go to the next layer, I can cover it up if I get it now. If I get it right on the middle of the face or something, you know, you don't have to get out the white paint or something. <laughs> but I don't worry about it too much, you know. It, it just depends on how much time you want to take, guys. You know, I take a, you know, a, a little more time because I'm not talking about it when I'm by myself. When I'm here with you guys, I'm I'm rabbit trailing, showing you little, you know, stuff like this, you know, along the way that I wouldn't be doing just by myself. But I enjoy coloring with you guys. I like showing, you know, how I do stuff. That's why I do this, right? <laughs> I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't like doing it, right? But I do want her hair to have a little bit of depth, so. Be kind of get a little bit wetter right there along the. And I'll shadow in there with pencil. Just give her a nice little pretty base coat. Get too much water, take your Kleenex and dab it off before it, you know, starts getting away from you. Okay, let's just put a few little. Okay, I think that's enough. Let me dry this. Just look and see if I missed anything. Probably did, but we can always go back in there. All right, now let's dry this again. You have to have, it has to be 100% dry before you go in there with color pencil or you're going to start peeling up the paper again. It is a whole good, CB. All right, so now let's see. What do I want to do for some color highlights? 
let's see. Let me move all my paint and stuff out of the way. Got to make another room. All right. So I want, I know I want uh, kind of a red brown for a little bit of extra color, but I want to basically stay with a dark brown. Now, do I want some, do I want to use white? Now, remember, when I go over this, it's going to be very white. So I have to, let me just show you. Look, see how white I can get that? See, see how white that can be with just the pencil stroke? Do I really want white in her hair? You see, or would I rather have her brightness be a tan color? You know, like a natural tanny color. Um, let me see. Or even a kind of a creamy yellow. That might be too much. Let me look for a tan. Okay, here we go. This is what is cream. Okay, so cream can give her some nice highlights without it being stark white. Because I don't want her to look like she has gray hair. So I can go in here now. And it's probably best to pick your highlights out at first um, because once you start getting color pencil on here, remember, this is just a wash of paint. So I can go over it, remember, I can go over it with white or a light color before, once you get pencil on it, this is what happens. Pre-pencil, after pencil. Pre-pencil, after pencil. <laughs> So, but I don't know that I want white, white highlights. I think I'll go with cream. But because it's there's no pencil on here yet, now I'm able to go in here and really pick out where I want highlights, right? If that was already penciled, I can't get that back. You can't get that, you can't, there's no going back. <laughs> Once you put the pencil on, let you erase it out. So I'm just going to pick out a few like where I might want the really bright highlights, like maybe coming around like that. And you can always go back in there with paint and paint in, in, in more too. Because, you know, that's I'll do that. But I'm just going to pick that. That's too much right there. I don't need that bright highlight right there. I just want to pick out a few here and there. That's too much. I'll go over that. But let's just say there's some right over here. Okay. A few right in the curl around the outside edge of the curl. You just pick out your highlights. Just pick out a few. But you want to do that while there's just acrylic paint because if you start trying to do this over brown pencil, let's just say I completely covered her with brown brown pencil. You can't go on top of the brown pencil like this. And I'm over exaggerating the highlights just to show you, show them to you. Okay? So see? Hope that made sense. Moving on. Now I think I want to put in a little bit of under red tones in it. Just a little bit of a, I'm just going to kind of lightly now, I'm going over the brown. That's paint, okay? I'm going over the paint with just a little bit. I'm barely touching. It doesn't take much pressure. It's going, it's the tooth of the paint is grabbing right on to, okay? So this is going to be like my mid-tone brown because I want to have a little bit of depth to her hair, not just slack. Okay. <clears throat> so now I'm just going over the brown and adding a little bit of that in there. Not necessarily covering every little inch, but just adding some more depth to the hair. Hope you can see that. Take your time. Don't hurry, kind of like I'm doing, because I want to get this done. We're going to run out of time in five to ten minutes. So I gotta get a little bit further along. Okay, because I want to add the shadows in her hair and the deep more detail. But I gotta get a mid-tone brown in here because I want her hair to be brown, not like solid black brown. Dark brown, but. So now I'm getting rid of some of that white highlight or that cream color highlight in there. Okay. 
Just adding a little bit of that color in there. And I'm, I, I wish I, you could see how lightly I'm touching the, how lightly I'm putting pressure. It's just like hardly any pressure at all, guys, because of the, the paint that's on there. Just grabbing that color like crazy. I think I want a little bit more brown right in the center there. Keep her highlights on the edges. Okay, I'm gonna go start blending in with the dark. Okay, but now you can see, can you see there's a couple shades of brown in there? One more hour until you go to bed. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, well, my time, this is my second three hours and it's getting ready to run out in 10 minutes. And Jean, but Jean streams at four, well, if you're already in bed, Jean streams at four Eastern. So I just want a little less I want the highlights kind of formed right around her face there. All right, so now I'm going to take the brown, and now I'm going to pick out some of the darker, like right in her part right there, around the flowers, and I'm going to start shading now. Start shading around the flowers, and like where the, because the, the flowers would cause a shadow. All right. And we can start like picking, you know, almost like, like individual little hairs more. Just depends on, you know, how much time you want to take. See how it starts to have some depth there? Her hair kind of comes around this way and she has like a, it's almost like a bang that's coming across the front of her face. And again, I'm not loving the cream color. It still looks a little gray to me. I might go over the cream color with another color to make her highlights a little bit more yellow, you know, like more highlight color than like gray. I want to avoid her having gray hair. But hopefully you can see it's starting to give more depth. Like right under here, be nice and dark. I kind of touched her, oh, I touched her face right there. Let's use the electric eraser. <laughs> I don't want to erase her skin, so I got to be careful there. I just wanted to use it again. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the hair. <laughs> and you can even have some real, real dark areas, maybe some black, like really deep in the shadows. Flavia, are you saving her for another stream or posting the finish? Oh, I don't know yet. Um, I probably won't have time to work on her some more today. I will post the picture of the art journal page we did earlier. But I always try to post the finished pictures on my use, I mean, on my uh, Facebook, guys. So I said it earlier, but I know different people are here. Um, I have an, uh, in my Facebook, you don't have to follow me or me follow you to be able to go see, go in my photos and then albums. And I have a color book album and other albums that are, that are public for anyone to look at. I try to post all my uh, color book and color books, the covers of them, the ones I bought and the finished pages. I try to uh, post them all in there. So if I don't finish it, I'll post it in there. Or, well, I'll, I'll post it other places, too, if, when I finish it. But I just can't ever guarantee 
And that's why I said at the beginning of the show, I'm not going to put pressure on myself to finish color book pages every single one I start. Because for, you know, you know, I can't finish one in one sitting. R rarely can I finish a full one in two sittings, even when I kind of rush. So I don't want to, and I want to do all kinds of color books for you guys and not just spend a full month on one page, right? All right, so now I'm going to go in here with, where's my black? I want to get in here with a few really, really dark areas because I want some I want her hair to be dark brown I'm gonna go you just got to keep layering guys keep layering don't get in a hurry like I'm starting to here because I'm running out of time because this is all gonna have another coat over it that kind of make it cohesive but you got to get those you got to get the base done it's all about the base <laughs> all right so I'm just putting I hope this you can see. See how I'm leaving some areas light? That's actually a space right there. Her arms back in there. Dark. You can put any color, any kind of shades of brown you want, depending on, if you don't want this many colors, just don't put this many. But I think that um, I'm probably going to put a little bit more of the sienna on it. I don't want to hurry with the black here because I can go overboard with the black. Got to kind of... And you see how it's starting to give you some more layers there? You want to take your time, not kind of rush through it like I'm doing here. All right, let's see. You can go back over it with a couple other, you know, the lighter browns. Can you see?
All right, so now I think I will go over it with a little bit more of the red. Now, you know what? Let's go with the... Hmm. I want a yellow ochre. I don't want to get it too blonde highlights, but maybe it just needs a little bit of it's gonna not, I don't want to dull it down. I want to be careful. Just want to do the edges. I'm going to kind of go on the edges of the brown, not completely get rid of that cream color, but I'm just going to kind of blend with a little bit of yellow ochre on the edges of the highlights. Because I want to keep it bright. And then I can go back in there with some more dark brown. So I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow ochre right along the edge of the highlights. I don't know if that's showing up, but it just gives it a little bit more dimension. Do a little bit of yellow ochre, then back with the red brown, the sienna. Because I don't want to lose every bit of my bright, bright highlights there. I want to make sure I keep those. Can y'all see a difference? I don't know. Yeah, just giving it a little bit more glow because I don't, I certainly don't want it to look like she has white highlights. That's why I went with cream at the beginning. Okay, so I'm just going to get in there with a little bit of the yellow. Now I'm going to go back in there with the red. Well, it's not red, it's uh, sienna, what is it called? The uh, burnt ochre. Okay, let me sharpen. And then I'll probably go back in one more time with the dark brown to blend out the black. All right, so now I'm going to get back in here just a little bit with the... And again, you have to cover the whole thing, so it takes a little bit of time here. Give her a little bit more brown. Okay, so my recording's getting ready to stop. Okay, I'll stay here with you guys, but my recording's getting ready to stop like right now. So thanks, everybody, for joining me. I'll make sure and at least post. If I don't post a picture, I'll show it to you when I'm done. So thanks for being here, guys. And I uh, hope you all enjoyed coloring in. This is the book, Jasmine Beckett Griffith. So I hope you all enjoyed coloring in her. And um, see you all later.